This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So today I'm going to cover uh, one important method that is wait for enabled. This is something very interesting. And uh, how can you solve this? So the scenario is like this. So let's see you go to this particular page, right? And on this particular page, this is a registration form. We have seen such scenarios. The submit button is disabled right now. The moment you select the checkbox, then only it will be enabled. So we in Selenium, we have already seen that is enabled method, right? But we can check this particular button or element is enabled or not. We can wait for that. So there is a method wait for enabled method is also there. It means we are going to wait for the we are going to wait this particular element to be enabled and then you can put a wait over there and if you see the definition you just simple check wait for enabled and it's saying that okay you simple pass three parameters and uh, time timeout the if you really want to reverse it i'll tell you what you mean by reverse or if you want to put any custom error also the default error message if you really want to override you can simple pass the error message as well then how exactly it works so if you in a, um, you know if you select this particular checkbox inspect it let's see and uh, let's inspect this so first time if you see that this is the button having this property disabled equal to disabled right this particular property so just because of this property this button is disabled the moment i select the checkbox now you observe the property the disabled property is gone from here then i again uncheck this and again the disabled property is there it means this button is totally dependent on this particular checkbox. So how to handle this scenario? So what I, I'm going to do, I'll come on this particular page. I select this checkbox and I will wait for this particular button to be enabled using wait for enabled method. Right. So let's see how to do that. So I'm not going to create a page for this. I'm directly writing the test. OK, and because this is very straightforward. So let's uh, create a file over here and my file is this time wait for enable dot test dot js right and here i'll start writing this right quickly i'll write something let's see a wait for enabled case comma function like this and i'll be writing one it over here that it that uh, wait for button to be enabled okay wait for button enabled and i'll be writing function like this and i'll write something should wait for button to be enabled and then i'll be writing my browser dot the url and whatever the url is there so this is my url so i'll directly hit this url and come on this particular page and then what I'll do, I'll create two web elements, one web element for this particular checkbox. So I quickly inspect this checkbox. And here you see that, okay, we don't have anything. We don't have any class. We don't have any ID. So I'll be using XPath for this. So I'll do one thing. I'll be using one XPath like uh, name equal to, let's see, agreement, we can use it. So I'll just copy this name equal to agreement, agree terms, something like this. So I'll create one constant and this is my checkbox is equal to a dollar and then i'll put a bracket over here in bracket i'll simple write so this is, will be my checkbox and i'll be writing like this uh this is my button or this is my input field so input bracket at the rate which property the name property so at the rate uh, name is equal to in single code this Okay, so this will be my checkbox expert that I have created. Now I'll be creating another one that is for my button. So this is for my button is equal to submit button, right? So I'll give some name as a submit btn is equal to dollar bracket single quote. And for button, if you inspect this guy, for button it's saying button type ID is available, so I'll be using the ID. So this is my hash ID like this. 
right? So why I'm using this particular space character because inside the X bar, this name equal to agree terms, I have to write within single quotes. So, right? So that's why I have to write with these letters. So you have to use this particular special character instead of single quote. So let's see two elements I have created. Now, first I'm gonna do what? I simply click on this particular button. So checkbox dot click on it. So I'll be using click, right? The moment I click on it, this button will be enabled. Now I'm gonna wait for that button is enabled or not. So how will you do that? I simply write submit button dot wait for enabled method is there. Wait for enabled and I can give some time, let's see 4,000 milliseconds. So I'm gonna wait for four seconds. Right. If this button is enabled with four seconds, within four seconds, then test is passed. Otherwise, test is failed. And then what I'm going to do after four seconds, we are waiting for it to be enabled. And then I'll put one assertion over here that assert dot sorry, assert dot equal. Okay. Assert dot equal what? It should be equal to true. What true means whatever the button that you have, that submit button that you have, right? Submit button is enabled or not. You remember, we already covered is enabled method will return true or false. If the button is enabled, otherwise it will return true, otherwise it will return false, right? So first I'm gonna click on it and waiting till four seconds, the button is enabled or not. Once it is enabled, then I'm gonna check is enabled or not and matching with True, writing with one assertion. So let's run it and let's see. So I'm gonna execute it from my terminal. So I simply write npm test hyphen hyphen space hyphen hyphen spec dot forward slash test and my file name is wait for enable dot test dot js. So you see the browser is getting open. It will select the checkbox and okay, it's saying something. Uh, should wait for button. It's saying invalid selector, illegal selector was specified. Okay. Ah, so we have to start with double slash. This is the X path right. So we have to start with it, double slash. No issues. Let's run it again. Because this was X path, the X path should start with forward double slash. Now it's working fine. You can see that should wait for button to be enabled like this button to be enabled like this. So just to showcase you what I'll do, I'm going to wait browser dot pause after clicking on this so that you can actually see that. Okay. That it's actually clicking on the specific checkbox just for the sake of showing you because right now it's so fast that you are not able to see it. So browser dot pause. I'm going to wait for let's see three seconds and then it's going to wait for button to be enabled within four seconds and let's see it's working or not so see it's clicking on it the by the time button is enabled now it's going to check yes button is enabled perfect it's saying yes absolutely working fine and if you see the console output you will see that uh, Okay, it's saying finding the submit button, absolutely fine. And then you see the calls over here. It's saying first we are clicking on it and then we are checking the button is enabled or not. And this result is true, right? And then we are checking the button is again enabled or not with this dot is enabled method. And then again, it's saying true. And that is what we are expecting. So ultimately what I'm trying to say guys, it means the moment you remove this particular browser dot pause now, moment you click on the checkbox, this particular checkbox, if the button is enabled, we are checking, we are waiting for button to be enabled. We are waiting for element to be enabled within four seconds like that, right? So like this, you can simply do that. Now let's take the reverse thing. What if I want to check that, okay, button to be disabled. How will you check the button to be disabled? So I'll do one thing, I'll create one more checkbox. I mean, one more test over here. One more it block should wait for button to be disabled in that case. Right. And 
remove this line because already we are launching this URL over here. And uh, checkbox is this submit button. Let's see, I have created this checkbox dot click. Okay, checkbox dot click. We are waiting for button to be enabled and uh, asserting it. And what I'll do, I'll click on this particular checkbox once again. Right, it means I click on this particular checkbox once again, so button will be disabled once again. Right, so now this time I'm going to check that button to be enabled or not. So my submit button dot wait for enabled, and this time I'm again I'm saying wait for 4000 milliseconds, comma. I just pass true. True means just reverse it takes. If you see the API documentation, it's saying if true, it wait for the opposite opposite means it's want to wait for button to be disabled element to be disabled it means now it will behave like wait for disabled okay so default is always false if you don't pass anything over here the default is always false comma false is already written you don't need to write it but the moment you write comma true it means we are waiting for to be disabled it will behave like opposite okay opposite action of enabled so opposite action of enabled is it's, we are waiting for button to be disabled now. And then I'll put one assertion one more time over here. Now this time, obviously we have clicked on the checkbox and uh, button is already disabled. So is enabled method will return false. So that's why I have to write false over here. Just to make sure that okay, my test case is working fine or not, right? So let's run it again and let's see it's working or not. So my first test is should wait for button to be enabled. And second test is should wait for button to be disabled. We are clicking checkbox, waiting for enabled. Yes, it's fine. Asserting it perfectly fine. Again, you click on the checkbox and again, you wait for button to be disabled by passing true over here. So it will behave like the reverse of this. And then again, check button is disabled. Yes, so enabled method is enabled method will return false. And we are writing an assertion over here for false. Fine. So let's see. Okay, so it's waiting button to be disabled or not. Let's see. Oops, it got failed. It's saying that uh, it's still not enabled after 400 milliseconds. So that's fine. We will do one thing. Button, okay, wait for enabled 4000, comma true. Perfect. Checkbox dot click. We are checking on it. And uh, okay saying that it got failed it's saying it's still not enabled after 400 base seconds okay not an issue we will do one thing okay let's run it again i'll do one thing let me skip this particular test okay let's run on the second one oh, oh, oh. We have to launch the URL no issues, so I'll just launch the URL once again. Okay, for the second test. Now let's run it again. So let me clear the run zone and run it again. Okay, now test case got passed. Okay, maybe it was just because the first test exactly clicked on. Okay, button and then again it clicked on, so it is actually deselecting it. Okay, and again we are writing waiting for an image. So that's why the first test I'm skipping. And then in the second test, I'm writing that wait for button to be disabled like that. Okay, now it's absolutely working fine. Okay, you can see that should wait for button to be disabled. Absolutely working fine. And this time the enabled method will return what? It will return false. You can see that it's returning false. This enabled API is getting called. It's returning false. So that's why we are comparing with false. In assertion, so that's where my test case got passed. Like this, simple you can use it, is. right? So this is the com okay concept of wait for enabled. Now we have seen one more method in my previous uh, lectures. You can see that uh, wait for displayed method also we have seen. Wait for displayed method. What exactly it will do? It's saying that okay, wait for element for the provided amount of milliseconds to be displayed or not to be displayed on the page, right? So you can apply, let's see, whenever you are uh, launching the web browser, 
or URL. I mean, launching a URL or clicking on a button or link, and then the page is getting refreshed or new page is getting okay is coming or uh, you're landing on a new page. In that case, some elements you are going to do that. Let's see in this particular case, what I'm going to do that uh, browser dot URL that I have I'm launching it. After that, before clicking on it, you can do one thing. You can wait for display for this particular checkbox. So you can simply write wait for displayed method you can simply write it okay it means i'm going to wait for display and then only you are going to perform some action on it so like this wait for displayed method you can simply use it for this purpose only for okay only for element to be displayed on the page or not same thing wait for displayed also you have if you pass uh true it will behave like opposite it means not to wait okay wait for displayed and wait for not to be displayed so if you pass wait for not to be displayed with a true it will behave like a reverse reverse of wait for displayed it means do not wait for displayed and you can give a specific amount of uh, okay a specific amount of uh, time as well as you can pass uh, the reverse should be true or false so if you pass true it will behave like a reverse of this. So reverse of this generally we don't use it, guys. Or you can provide the custom error message also according to you. So it's always a good practice in WebDriver IO. Whenever you are waiting, uh, whenever you are doing a click, right? Or whenever you are landing on a new page, whenever you are clicking on a specific link, landing on the second page, the third page, or fourth page, or you are launching the URL like this in that case elements are taking some time to be displayed so we are waiting for displayed so by default time is 500 milliseconds remember this might be an interview question same thing for wait for enabled also the default time is 500 milliseconds and this wait is so dynamic in nature if let's see element you have given let's see 10,000 milliseconds if the element is not found within 10 seconds then only it will throw an error otherwise till 10,000 milliseconds it means till 10 seconds it will keep checking the element is displayed on the page or not like that okay so if you don't write it it will take the default timeout that is 500 milliseconds same thing for wait for enabled also right so that's a basic difference between wait for displayed and wait for enabled method remember okay you can practice some other application let's see you go to this internet Heroku app and here you see that let's see dynamic content okay not here uh, dynamic controls here you see it's enabled and disabled this example you can take it for your practice as an assignment right now this particular checkbox you see that i mean this particular text field is disabled you can see this is my disabled property is there that's why this is disabled the moment you click on enable it's taking some time we have to wait for this particular element to be enabled now you see that okay this is disabled property is gone like this and again you make it disabled it will be disabled it means we are waiting okay for this particular element to be disabled so in that case we have to use what we have to use wait for enabled let's just taking around three seconds so we can say that wait for enabled four seconds or five seconds once this is element is visible we are going to wait for that right guys so like this you can simply practice for this particular application for this particular page you can hit this url do it as an assignment in this way like that why i have taken this example because this example is quite appropriate like uh, whenever you see a registration page you have to select the license agreement terms and conditions and then only submit button will be enabled so this is more appropriate example i have shown you so that's all for this particular video guys i hope you guys are liking and enjoying web driver io series and very soon i'll be finishing uh you know this complete series in next couple of uh, by this particular weekend so please learn it design it design your code design some framework and i'm pretty much sure that okay you guys will be okay learning a lot of things in web driver io series thank you so much guys thanks for watching